بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام ورسول الله والآن مع بعض I'd like to thank everyone for attending uh, today's sermon It's uh, wonderful to see everyone again um, I felt that with the Chinese New Year happening recently and the coming of Lent as well as it being Emi's first sermon of the year and inshallah we'll look forward to many wonderful events coming up in 2016 I thought with this being Emi's first sermon of the year that we could actually talk about new starts and breaking habits unfortunately you'll have to listen to me for the next 10 minutes or so uh, only this week we had um, Ash Wednesday and the arrival of Lent um, as you'll know it's a 40 day period before Easter and it was actually the number 40 that got me thinking the occurrence of the number 40 in Judeo-Christian tradition as well as Islamic tradition is a common occurrence and an interesting one too because there are many figures uh, who endured difficult circumstances which lasted 40 days and you'll find it, it's quite interesting the appearance of the number 40 in the Bible and the Quran and then also the Hadith as well. Um, you know, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, spent 40 days in the fire and lived because the, uh, God made the fire like flowers. Moses, peace be upon him, spent 40 days in Mount Sinai, where he received the Ten Commandments. Prophet Jonah, Yunus, was in the whale's mouth for 40 days. 40 was the number of days that Prophet Ilyas spent in the wilderness before God appeared to him in, the, appeared to him in a cave in Mount Horeb. 40 was the number of days that Jesus was tempted in the desert by Satan. Uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was praying in the ca- and fasting in the cave for 40 days. Uh, the flood that Noah encountered, uh, it, it lasted for 40 days. And uh, we know from a hadith that people, uh, believers, have been encouraged to devote themselves to God Almighty for 40 days to see springs of wisdom break forth from their hearts and flow from their tongues. There are a number of mentions of the, the, uh, the number 40 as well. Um, Moses, peace be upon him, travelled 40 years in the desert. Uh, you know, Prophets David and Solomon each ruled for 40 years. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, had, uh, had his prophethood revealed to him at the age of 40. So you're probably wondering, uh, what is the relevance of me mentioning the number 40? Also, why is it relevant to be going on about the number 40? I've actually been reading up recently that 40 days is very significant in uh, breaking bad habits and creating two change in people's lives. Many uh, behaviorists believe it takes 40 days to change a habit and to truly change. And they've actually attempted to prove this through studies, whether it's uh, re- um, recovery from an addiction or weight loss. 40 days is a common length of time for programs to make lasting changes in people's lives. This actually brings me on to my next topic about breaking habits because we all have them. We all have vices, we all have things that we can do without. For many Christians, Lent is often used as an opportunity to surrender bad habits as well as an opportunity for reflection and renewal. Uh, uh, There are lots of things I would like to change about myself and there are lots of things uh, I uh, I would like to alter about myself. There are a lot to, I would like to change the way I do many things myself. I particularly think about how I spend my time and how I could use it more efficiently. Because there are many thi- there are many phenomena that we have control over, but one of them is not time, as we are told in Surah Al-Asr. You've probably heard um, in the 134th, uh, 103rd chapter of the Qur'an, we are told, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ by time indeed mankind is in loss except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to truth and advised each other to patience. Uh, it's interesting that the term sabr, the term uh, sabr is often translated as patience. Um, you know, Time is a precious asset and if we keep to the four qualities mentioned in the verse in Surah Al-Asr of belief, doing good deeds, following truth and observing sabr, then we can get most of our time. Sabr, as I have said, is often translated as patience, but it can encompass so much more. There are three aspects of sabr. One of them is to remain steadfast in one's responsibilities, which would entail the need to overcome distractions. 
the second of them is to present one, prevent oneself from committing sins and also abstaining from vices. And the third is to endure hardships with patience. As I've already said myself, you know, I should be more productive with how I use my time and uh, procrastination is a, is, is a common habit of mine and a common habit that many of us fall into. I mean, uh, I, wa- I like to waste a lot of my time on Facebook. Uh, recently we had the, um, some uh, gravitational waves were uh, exhibited from uh, black holes recently, which uh, I, I was involved in discussions on Facebook recently because I have an interest in physics. And also, you know, I like to waste my time, you know, watching the football. But actually, sometimes when your team's, your favourite team's not doing very well in the league and they are on the brink of being knocked out of a cup competition, you realise that actually it can be a, a bit of a blessing in disguise when your own team is losing because you're more inclined to do other, more important things. We all find ourselves committing injustices th- uh, through, ha- through the wastage of precious time. We are told in the 23rd chapter of the Qur'an Until when death comes to one of them, he says, My Lord, send me back that I may do righteousness in that which I have left behind. No, it is only a word he is saying, and behind them is a barrier until the day they are resurrected. One thing we know is that our lives are finite. There will, t- there will come a time where our lives will come to an end. We will all return to God and we will, we will be asking for an, more opportunities to do righteousness. So what sort of things can we do with our time? We can devote ourselves to spiritual matters such as prayer. We can spend it doing extracurricular activities. We could be doing charitable causes. Or we could spend that time gaining knowledge. I would like to gain more knowledge about Islam and theology. Time wasting and procrastination are just examples of behaviours that deprive us of more important matters. But I'm sure everyone has habits that they could abstain from or vices that we can avoid, whether they are big or small. It could be how we spend our money. It could be that, you know, we eat something that's not good for us or that we find something addictive. It could be that we need to be more physically active. Or it could be that we could be more spiritually focused with rituals such as prayer. Or it could be even something bigger like indulging in something inappropriate or harmful. There are a number of steps that one should take if they are to uh, overcome bad habits. The first of those steps is to pick a habit for 30 or 40 days. Prioritise your bad habits and focus on one for that length of time. And if you're committed to it, to changing at least one habit, you will see remarkable results. The second step is to remember that it is within us to change. The third step is to remember that God loves those who acknowledge mistakes. And there is a hadith um, which says uh, from Sahih Muslim that says by him, in whose hand is my life, if you were not to, to not commit sin, God would sweep you out of his existence and would place you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from God, and he would have pardoned them. The fourth step is to intend and plan to change. Uh, the fifth step is to replace a bad habit with a good one. We are told uh, from another hadith, uh, you know, be conscious of God wherever you may be. Follow up a bad action with a good one, which will wipe out, the, which will wipe the former out, and behave good-natured towards people. The sixth step is to change your environment. Um, we are told in uh, Surah Al-Talaq, whoever is conscious of God and keeps his duty to Him, He will make a way for him to get out of every difficulty, and He will provide to him the sources he could never imagine. And um, recently, with the um, with the black holes that have been wi- the uh, gravitational waves that have been witnessed from black holes re- black holes recently in the news, uh, I thought that with the confirmation of Einstein's theory of general relativity, it would uh, be relevant to quote some uh, something from Einstein, who said, "Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is insanity." So that feeds into my uh, the sixth step about changing your environment.
The seventh step is to reward your successes. And the eighth step is to ask God for help, God Almighty for help. So there are some, uh, you know, this is a very short, uh, this is a very short uh, sermon, but there are some uh, things to take away from this. So just a couple of conclusions. Think about practices we indulge in that we could do without. Try to replace your bad habits with good ones. Remember that apart from time, you know, it is within us to change and we have control of everything uh, going forward. Think about how we spend our time and how we could use our time more effectively. And I'd just like to give everyone, uh, you know, one minute to reflect to uh, reflect on everything I've said and think about, you know, anything that you could do differently, anything that you could change about yourself, any bad habits that you can get rid of. And um, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. And shortly we will start the prayer.